many universities have public dashboards and OSU is, is one of them. And there's lots of reasons to do it, but probably the first and foremost is to be transparent, um, trying to be able to, to show the public um, where we stand in terms of our, uh, the epidemic on campus and our response. Um, and that transparency is, is really huge in terms of being able to communicate with uh, the community around us that is influenced by um, our experience of cases, um, but also to the, to the state as a whole. So we have two sets of measures really on our dashboard. One represents the state of Ohio more broadly, and then the other represents um, Ohio State. So for the state of Ohio, uh, we have daily cases, we have the reproduction number for Ohio. And then uh, for OSU, we have student tests in a variety of different um, formats. Uh, and then uh, cumulative tests, which is how many tests have been performed to date among students and faculty or students and employees. And then information about isolation and quarantine beds, which is really important uh, in terms of where we're at in, in our response and our capacity for dealing with, uh, with COVID-19. And then lastly, uh, an indicator of personal protective equipment and enhanced cleaning, um, which are key mitigation strategies for the pandemic. Student tests are reported with, with three different ways of looking at it. Uh, cumulative gives you information of just from the start uh, back in August until now uh, at about how many tests have been performed and gives an overall sense of um, where things are at. Uh, the single day is an indicator just day by day of the number of, of tests that have been performed and the positivity rate for that given day. And that will vary a lot over the course of a week, uh, in part because uh, we have many fewer tests on the weekend, as an example. And um, when you have fewer tests, you have much more um, variability potentially in, in, the, uh, in the test results. And so the seven day average is one that is essentially a way to smooth the data over time and give you a sense of on this day, if we look backwards one week, what is the average? And it's, it's a rolling average so that, um, you know, yesterday was a seven day average of the seven days prior to that. Today is a seven day average for the seven days prior to that. So it incorporates both the single day information, but smooths it out to give you a better indication of, of where we're really at. Um, take sort of smoothing out the variability that you might have. So if I were to pick one as an epidemiologist, it's easy. I pick the seven day average. It's a very useful measure. Um, but some people like to see the single day one in particular and others like to see the cumulative. So we felt that it was important to include all of them. Whenever we look at test results, it's, it's really important to recognize that the test results on the dashboard are a compilation of testing done for different purposes. So at OSU, we have a pretty robust program for testing students, particularly those that live on campus, where every student that lives on campus is tested once a week. Off-campus students are also selected for testing um, at at a rate that is approximately um, once a month. Um, and, and then we do testing on top of that. So that's testing that's really done for what we call mitigation and surveillance purposes. So that testing is, is trying to keep the, the uh, epidemic under control and, and also give us a very clear look into it. But on top of those tests, we have um, tests where students seek testing because they're not feeling well. Uh, so students who might have symptoms that are consistent with COVID. We also have testing that is related to contacts. So if someone is a positive case, um, we try to test their contacts to make sure that they aren't infected as well. And then lastly, sometimes we have to do what we call targeted testing. If we see 
a, a cluster of cases that is related to a, a residence hall, for example, or a fraternity or a sorority, um, then we can do targeted testing of other people living in those environments. And when you do targeted testing, your positivity rate may be higher than just when you're testing everyone. So when you look from one day to the next, the thing that's difficult to interpret a little bit is if there was a change in the testing procedures. I think that's really the, the biggest thing to be um, cautious of when you're interpreting the, the tests by students is, is just that the reason for testing doesn't come through in the number. Um, and so you have to be a little bit cautious in over-interpreting uh, a bump from one day to the next. The, the reproduction number is a epidemiological measure that has been used by epidemiologists for decades to, to help us understand epidemics. And what it is, is an indication of on average, how many people a person with infection is likely to infect. So when you, if, if I'm infected and the RT value is two, that means that on average, I would infect two people, or someone like me would, in, would infect two people. If the RT is greater than one, that means that the epidemic will be expanding, and because one person is infecting more than one other person, and so it's gonna increase. If the RT is at one, it's basically under control, but not shrinking. And if the RT is less than one, then it is, going to be contracting as long as something doesn't change to perturb it. So when you look at, at an RT and to interpret it, um, you're, you're trying to get a gauge of whether things are expanding or things are contracting. Um, and again, what we want to see is an RT value that is one or below. Anything above one is concerning, especially as it gets uh, as high as two or more. 